All right. So um, I'm from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. It's so wonderful that uh, I uh, I was listening to uh, the speeches by the uh, ministers talking about uh, how to uh, you know to overcome the COVID-19 and also the shift in education that is needed because of the onset of digitalization, because of the onset of uh, Industry 4.0. So uh, I hereby just like to present uh, what I've tried recently at the university, which I believe is a very effective method to overcome COVID-19 and be able to bridge some of the skill gaps that uh, the minister have, uh, have said that uh, we need to educate our youngsters to be ready as uh, digital workers taking on the industry 4.0 applications and more. I call it uh, the global classroom to nurture knowledge workers in the industry 4.0 era. Now, obviously, uh, you know, diverse speakers have already mentioned, uh, we're living in a, uh, a very uh, competitive time, which uh, not only uh, in terms of education, not only uh, discipline-based education are important, but uh, the skills, the soft skills, and also the, many of the skills that the university failed to cover or not fast enough to cover. We obviously need to provide a new, uh, refreshing, completely different learning environment. Uh, and uh, we need to make use of uh, data, which are now more frequently available for us to uh, analyze and hopefully be able to customize education for students and even predict some uh, problematic uh, uh, students uh, before they, uh, they uh, you know, actually develop into serious problems. Innovation, knowledge management, and uh, technologies are key to success, right? So, you know, so how do we actually create this uh, environment? Uh, industry people have already said that uh, despite university putting out, uh, you know, pumping out graduates uh, in a big uh, way, uh, many of the graduates are still uh, very uh, skill deficient. In fact, in terms of, uh, you know, having the skill to identify um, the, the business models that, that is needed and the change that is needed, in order to take advantage of uh, the fourth industrial uh, revolution. And they are right, you know, to, uh, despite uh, many posts being offered, I suspect that uh, uh, vacancies are not being filled uh, very rapidly because uh, there was a mismatch between uh, skills of uh, graduates and skills that industry needs. What are some of these skills? Uh, most of them are actually soft, soft skills, uh, and that's why, you know, the university discipline-based training uh, are insufficient and my personal uh, belief is uh, most universities are not fast enough in uh, uh, realigning the ship uh, so that uh, to provide this kind of uh, uh, skill-based uh, training. So there's much to, uh, to work on. Uh, for example, computational intelligence, sustainability, critical thinking, time management, uh, uh, social media skills, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, computational intelligence, and more. Writings on the wall, you know, uh, we, are, we are living in a heavily uh, Connected society, uh, connecting the dots, it's uh, one of the ways to, uh, to succeed. And uh, uh, accordingly, our delivery of education needs to change. We have to consciously steer our students to look, not just uh, learning from inside the classroom and from the teacher, but to look outside, uh, in the outside environment, in the real world, to see how they can better spot opportunities and connect the dots. And also making use of networks trusted networks and tools on the internet in order to uh, enhance the digital literacy to discover and uh, exploit opportunities. Well, we have to say, we need a new curriculum, we need new pedagogies, and we need new learning environments. Now, the um, university's answer to this traditionally is, uh, you know, via a number of things, pedagogies, and also the internationalization program, which uh, typically Internationalization can mean that uh, we can, uh, you know, internationalize the curriculum. We have uh, international textbooks, we have international speakers, we have uh, international students. We can also have international, sorry, co-curriculum activities. In other words, additional work that are outside uh, academic uh, uh, assessments. And that's, uh, you know, the international evenings, uh, cultural events, and so forth. We definitely, uh, you know, have been doing a lot of uh, uh, student exchange programs where we send and we receive students from outside and uh, our students, our local students, learn alongside with, uh, with um, uh, you know, uh, foreign students in the classroom. And that's, um, you know, something that's been going on for, for decades. And some universities also redecorate their campus so that they have a special uh, cultural corner, uh, you know, to, with particular attention to a particular culture and uh, ethnic groups. 
Are we doing enough? I don't think so. In fact, uh, you know, with the advancement of technologies and the need for change, we have to do a lot more, a lot, lot more. So at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, uh, we're facing the same problem. You know, the COVID-19 has hit up in a very, very bad way. You know, so every university is struggling, especially universities in, uh, I suppose, America, England, Australia, New Zealand, where these universities uh, traditionally rely a lot of uh, income from uh, foreign students. So come COVID-19, there is severe restriction on travel. You know, the international students uh, cannot travel uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to their destination university. And uh, home institution students, same thing, you know, have difficulty to travel to uh, their, uh, you know, to, uh, their foreign institutions in order to continue with their, their studies. So they are stuck, you know, everyone's stuck in their home country. So can we, uh, can we break out of this, this mode? It's been, uh, at Poly U, it's been uh, nearly two years now that uh, we have been in this uh, status quo where, uh, you know, to, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very silent on campus. It's very few students on campus because of those social distancing measure because of, uh, you know, the restriction and because of uh, online classes. So uh, talking about student exchange program, that's uh, out the window, as I said, because most people cannot travel freely without uh, uh, vaccination and also without uh, quarantine control, uh, mandatory periods. So that forces us to think about, um, can we do better? You know, the world is out there. There's no sort of people wanting to learn. There's no sort of uh, teachers who are who are teaching and teaching well. So uh, can we try to bring the world to our campus? You know, bring the world to our campus. What does that mean? Well, if you look at uh, um, uh, the impact of COVID-19, uh, I suppose not just our university, most universities take their courses online, you know, switch it to online. But what I've observed that uh, most teachers, um, you know, they are merely delivering their, their courses or their, their, their classes in the e fashion. So they are doing much of what I'm doing now, you know, just doing e lecturing rather than uh, using new pedagogies that actively um, get students to, uh, to engage in more active learning. Now, that's uh, obviously a lot of room for improvement, but there is another much, much bigger, you know, set of things that we can do. Uh, the e, you know, the, in, uh, in the e learning can mean a lot of things, it can be processing data, can be linking students together, can be linking teachers together can be linking students with content, can be, uh, you know, the mixing the classes from different universities. Exactly, that is exactly what, I'm, what I've done, you know, in uh, staging global classrooms. If you look at this, uh, typical uh, poly use uh, hybrid classes where we have online uh, uh, broadcast as well as uh, in-class activities at the same time, you know, that's what we're doing now in this semester. You know, I, uh, typically, traditionally, we share the link to our students uh, so that uh, irrespective of where they are, they can still join. But uh, I've now switched on, uh, no, a few semesters ago, I further enable uh, students from foreign universities, third party, pre-agreed, pre-arranged universities to join our classes as well. So therefore, in this case, you can see that I can link up what you with, for example, university in uh, Vienna, right, where um, our students and the students learn together and you have uh, two professors uh, you know, uh, delivering uh, the, the same class. And of course, we're not talking at the same time. We uh, can explore delivering half the lecture each and uh, and we can, uh, you know, uh, tap students into their perspective and uh, their sharing uh, between the two universities, two groups of uh, students. So it's a whole new dimension in uh, discovering and exploring new pedagogies. Uh, for us, uh, we can, as I said, uh, design new pedagogies that involves students in person together with uh, students online. We can create common assignments for students in both universities. We can set uh, common projects and direct students to form joint uh, project teams. You know, uh, students must form, uh, students from each university must form a team in order to work together to co-deliver the common deliverables in the project. That's very exciting because, uh, uh, you know, we immediately throw them at the deep end. They have to learn about better communications, they have to learn about critical thinking, they have to learn about um, um, collaboration, and they have to practice collaboration uh, tools. So, uh, you know, extremely realistic. So that's uh, our next enactment of the Global Classroom, and been doing that for the last uh, last two years with, uh, with a lot of success and satisfaction. Actually, uh, it's been extremely exciting. 
what are some of the benefits? Uh, you know, uh, by doing so, uh, we uh, we enable internationalization of our classroom without any traveling. You know, to, um, it, it's a very exciting feeling because our students don't need to travel. Uh, um, um, uh, then they can still experience, uh, you know, to learning together with uh, students from uh, other race, other ethnic groups, and other universities. We bring forward their exposure to um, uh, to practical uh, things while they are still in the classroom. So you don't have to wait until uh, you know to, uh, you are uh, you are graduate before you can learn about transcultural knowledge. We by uh, setting up uh, common assignments and also common projects. Our students learn about a range of skills that otherwise may not be um, easy to gain uh, in classroom in a traditional sense. Like what I said before, you know, collaboration, collaboration tools, critical thinking, communications, presentation skills, and more. And there are other benefits, like uh, you know, the, for the university, it's uh, it's, uh, it's very uh, convenient uh, to uh, to start uh, uh, hosting this kind of global classroom because. Uh, no need additional infrastructure assessment is needed, assuming that, uh, of course, uh, you know the uh, the uh, the power of the uh, of the internet transmissions is strong enough to stage uh, the uh, the classes. And writing is on the wall, you know. In News Three Four One Zero, many literature does suggest do suggest that the education sector, you know, have to step up to produce more talent equipped with the skill set and competences required in Industry 4.0. So we believe that uh, we are doing precisely that, and hopefully more, by staging uh, global classrooms. New skills uh, needed by uh, students, uh, you know, in order to, uh, to enable them to become uh, competent knowledge workers in the fourth industrial revolution, the digital literacy, uh, their ability to uh, create and to adjust new business models in order to take advantage of all the revolutionary technologies that are impacting uh, our society. One of the classes that uh, I did with Arizona State University is uh, to bridge a uh, transcultural uh, gap. I mean, cultural knowledge is a big part in terms of decision making and, uh, you know, the line of authority and the East and West Coast culture uh, have a big difference uh, in this. So I give half a lecture on uh, Eastern culture and the, uh, uh, my counterpart at uh, ASU uh, give the other half uh, in the Western culture. All right, and then students from Poly U and uh, Arizona State University, uh, you know, to, uh, ask questions, and uh, we had a lot of uh, lot of fun and learn a lot about uh, students, uh, you know, to learning and also to motivation in different perspective. We also set up to combine the bulletin board so that uh, students from multiple universities can uh, join discussions and share the learning materials together. And in fact, uh, this works uh, also beautifully because. Uh, not only is the sharing platform, but uh, all the students, together and teachers, are the eyes and ears for the course. We benefit from each other's learning and share. Another one is, uh, you know, the, we group students together, and together they co-create deliverables, whether that is scenario generation or, uh, you know, project deliverables. And it's wonderful because uh, they have to engage in a lot of collaborative activities. This one, uh, you know, the PolyU and Vienna University collaborate, where we, uh, uh, for PolyU, we record videos about uh, practical case studies in certain uh, areas, and Vienna students uh, listen to this video, we play them, and uh, write the reflective journals about them. All right, and, uh, you know, I, uh, I finish here. Uh, we have uh, excellent feedback from, uh, from students, local students, and also from the foreign students who are engaged in the global classroom. So uh, we are very, uh, we are sad, we are very uh, happy and, and uh, convinced that this, uh, this is a great effort and we should do more in the, uh, in the months and years to come. And finally, you know, the global classroom is one of the uh, uh, projects in the new ways of working, that uh, new ways of learning at PolyU, uh, pick the project that, uh, that I'm working on uh, here at our home institution. Well, to me, the well, it's our classroom, and the sky is the limit. So, uh, uh, colleagues, I hope that everyone uh, enjoyed um, this uh, this mode of new mode of learning, and I hope to collaborate with uh, relevant parties more in the uh, months and years to come. Thank you very much.